Is it well with your soul? I'd like to welcome our live streaming audience. Um, we are glad to have you joining with us over the internet. We hope that you join us live and in person one day soon. And if you'd like to participate in our service through the act of giving, please click the button on your screen or you, or you can give to Third Street Church of God by downloading the Givelify app. The sermonic text to your, for today has been read into our hearing. It's Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 23. And I'd like to update the title of the message, and we'll just call it, Can You Hear Me Now? Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for being with us through our time of praise and worship and song. We've now come to the preaching moment and have the opportunity to look into your word. I pray that you would use me as your vessel to speak your word to your people. I pray that I would decrease and that you would increase. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. It's these things we ask and pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. For about 10 years, beginning in, in the 2000s, Verizon ran one of the most memorable and successful ad campaigns of any wireless phone company. They hired an actor to appear in noisy places, underground locations, on elevators, in remote places, in rural places, all over the world. And when he would get there, he would hold his phone to his ear and say, can you hear me now? And he would pause for a moment, and then he would say, good, indicating that the person on the other end of the phone must have acknowledged that they indeed could hear him. Verizon was sending the message to consumers that it had the best reception and the best signal of all the wireless companies, and they would not drop a call. As wireless technology has advanced, the importance of our devices receiving messages and being heard has increased. We're not only concerned about whether we can be heard on phone conversations, but we want to make sure that our devices can send and receive text messages without blockage. We want to be able to use the Give the Fly app without our bars being too low for our tithes to go through. Or perhaps we want to Google a Bible passage as the minister is speaking. Whether we're using our phones to talk or text or search the internet, the thing that matters most is that our devices are sending and receiving signals with no blockage. Can you hear me now? In our text today, Jesus speaks a parable in which he is essentially asking his audience, can you hear me now? In this text, whether people can hear Jesus or not is not based upon where Jesus is standing or positioned or on whether Jesus is sending a strong signal. Instead, whether the people can hear Jesus is based on whether their signal is clear enough to receive and interpret the message that Jesus is sending to them. Jesus tells a parable to bring his listeners' attention that some of their signals are blocked and they are unable to hear, comprehend, and produce fruit from God's word. When Jesus begins telling the story, he first shouts, Behold! He's telling the audience to pay attention. Listen. Put your focus here. In Jesus' parable, a sower goes out into a field to sow seed. The sower sows seed on four different types of soil. The sower sows on a hardened pathway, kind of like when you see a path in the grass or when you were growing up, your mother said, don't walk on that grass. And if you can tell where someone has repeatedly walked on the grass because the grass is beat down or doesn't exist anymore and it's just a hard dirt pathway. So the first type of soil is just this hardened pathway. The second type of soil is stony. The third is thorny, and the fourth is just plain good soil. Jesus told this story to a multitude of people gathered by the Sea of Galilee, and as they heard this message, they likely began to consider the terrain of Galilee, where many of the people in the crowd were living as farmers. They probably grew and harvested wheat. They were familiar with the challenges of the terrain in planting and growing their crop. You see, Galilee has a long, hot, and dry season in which rain is sparse. 
Because of this, a farmer's field could be interspersed with various types of terrain. A dry patch here and a stony patch there. A thorny, a thorny bush here and fertile soil there. So as a sower goes about sowing seed in the sower's field, the sower is implicitly asking the question to the soil, can you hear me now? Jesus' parable is progressive. The reception that the land gives the seed gets increasingly better with each type of soil that the seed encounters. First, the sower's seed falls by the wayside on the hardened path. The wayside represents a pathway in a field that the farmer and his animals repeatedly walk on so that no grass or vegetation is able to grow. The wayside is tightly packed, hardened earth that the seed can't even begin to penetrate. When the sower sows the seed, the seed just sits on top of the soil, unable to germinate in any regard, and the birds of the air come and eat it. The seed that was sown here seems to have been a total waste. Next, the sower sows the seed, and the seed falls upon stony ground. For Galilean farmers, stony ground was deceptive. It was ground that was covered in a thin layer of grass, so it looked like it was fruitful, but right beneath the surface was a rocky, were rocks and pebbles. And so when the seed fell there, it sprouted, but it sprouted without a root. So then when the heat of the sun came and beat against it, the plant quickly died because it had no root and it was receiving no moisture. Now just as the stony ground was a little better uh, but, but still, the stony ground was a little better than the hardened pathway. And just as the stony ground was a little better than the hardened pathway, the thorny soil comes next, and it's a little better than the, than the stony ground. The thorns grow as part of like this greenish, brownish bush or brush. And so it has vegetation, and in fact, it provides a place of shade. And so when the seed falls onto the thorn, into the thorny bush area, it first is able to dig roots and it's able to germinate and has moisture and nutrients. The problem is when it comes up on top of the ground, the thorns choke it out. And so ultimately, though it's rooted, it's not able to produce fruit because the thorns on top are taking it out. But things get better still. And finally, the sower seed falls on good ground. Soil that is soft and moist and has no stones or thorns and soil that can finally respond, yes, when the sower calls out, can you hear me now? There on the good soil, the sower seed penetrates far beneath the surface, finds moisture and nutrients that it needs, germinates and grows up without hindrance to produce an abundant crop. When Jesus finished tell, finishes telling the parable, he proclaims, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. With this statement alone, Jesus drives home the point that the parable presents. Some people have ears and are able to listen, but they are unable to hear and understand the message. Jesus' parable is all about his followers' ability to listen and understand God's word. As we will see, Jesus is beseeching his listeners to pay attention to the condition of their hearts. Jesus' disciples approached Jesus and asked him why he spoke to the multitudes in parables. Jesus' response to their query comes off as a little harsh. Jesus says that he speaks to the people in parables because they are not meant to understand the secrets of God's kingdom, but the disciples were. It might seem like Jesus is asking, can you hear me now? And when the people respond, no, Jesus says, good, I didn't mean for you to hear me. <laughs> but that isn't what Jesus is saying at all. Instead, Jesus is saying that some people are hearing his words but not listening to his message. Some people have heart blockage that is blocking the signal, causing them to have low bars or no bars, and they can't understand the secrets of God's kingdom. For many students, including me, the school year starts this week. Have you ever been in a classroom and the teacher is teaching and you hear what she's saying but you don't understand it and it's not making any sense? And eventually you probably just tune the teacher out because you don't know what she's talking about. Your mind wanders off to a land far, far away 
from the subject matter that the teacher is presenting and you're just waiting for the class to end. I've been back in school for a few years now pursuing my Masters of Divinity at Howard University. And what I found is that when I do the assigned reading before class, when I hear the teacher's lecture, it's easy for me to listen and understand because the reading prepared me for what the teacher would say. I, when I come to class with a little understanding, I walk out with much more. But when I don't do the reading, I easily get lost in the lecture and my mind wanders off to other places because I'm not getting what the teacher is talking about because I didn't properly prepare my mind for learning before I came to class. If the teacher were to ask, can you hear me now, I'd have to say no. But it wouldn't be the teacher's fault, it would be my own. That's what Jesus is showing us through, the parable and, through this parable and this passage of scripture. Our ability to hear God's word and understand it is dependent upon the condition and preparation of our hearts. Jesus told the disciple that Isaiah's prophecy that people would hear and not listen and see but not comprehend was being fulfilled because the people's hearts were dull and hardened and they were unable to receive God's word. Because of their hardened hearts, they were unable to turn to God and receive the good news and the healing that Jesus was offering. After Jesus begins to explain to the disciples what the parable of the sower means, Jesus explains that the seed is the word of God's kingdom. Then he explains the soil. But before we discuss the soil, let's pause and consider that Jesus never identifies, the, gives us the identity of the sower. The sower could be God or the sower could be Jesus. The sower could be a preacher, a teacher, or any believer to whom God has entrusted God's word and given the mission to go and spread the good news. So at some time, we should all be sowers. The soil represents four types of people. People with hearts so hardened that they hear God's word, but it's totally blocked out. The second type of person has a stony heart. It mostly looks good and fruit producing on the outside, but just beneath the surface are stones and unaddressed pains and sorrows that keep God's word from taking root. So even though the person is excited when she first hears God's word, when the circumstances of life heat up, when she receives persecution, the word is scorched away. The third type of person is the person with the thorny bush heart. The thorn uh, the thorn represents the cares and worries of this world. These are the thorns that come and choke out the word that would otherwise produce a harvest. And the fourth type of person has a prepared heart. This person has addressed the issues that life presents. She has done the reading before class and is ready to receive and hear God's word. This person has unclogged the blockage. Because this person comes with a ready heart, the seed of God's word germinates, grows up, and produces much fruit for God's kingdom. Finally, someone is able to answer Jesus. Yes, I can hear you now. Whether we hear and receive God's word depends on the condition of our hearts when we are presented with God's word. Some people come to church week after week only to leave and say, the preacher was boring and the message wasn't for me. Or I need to go to a different church because I'm not receiving anything there. Some people stop going to church at all because they don't understand the messages of any pastor. And often these people come to church Sunday mornings as if they're doing a favor to God. And when they get there, the sermon makes no sense. The problem is that they show up having done no heart maintenance throughout the week. They haven't opened their Bibles all week. They missed the Wednesday prayer and, and word call yet again. They had no intentions of coming to Sunday school because it's too early and that's the only day I get to sleep in just a little bit. They didn't take time out to pray other than to proclaim Jesus wept before eating some unhealthy meal. Or they're trying to live holy and sinful at the same time and the sin that they won't let go of is choking out God's word. They come to church, they read their Bible, they pray, and they somehow think they've earned the right to sin just a little bit. That's no big deal, right? 
But it is a big deal because that sin that people sometimes see as little as little is squashing the seeds of God's word and preventing fruit from being produced in our lives. In some ways, Jesus' parable could be seen as a lament. The Bible tells us that God wants all people to hear God's word, repent, and receive salvation. The Apostle Paul admonishes us that once we are saved, we should be growing. We shouldn't be stuck drinking milk, but we should eventually be able to feast on the solid food of God's word. But in this parable, Jesus is telling us that the reality is that some people will never repent and get saved. Some people may get saved, but their lives will never produce fruit because though they see God's words, they don't get it, they don't get it and though they hear God's message, they don't understand. We should examine the condition of our hearts today. Take a look in the mirror and do some self-reflection are you overdue for a little heart maintenance? We live in a chaotic time where many things in the world seem to exist for the purpose of making our hearts hard or stony and thorny. But we have to till the soil of our hearts to keep our hearts fertile and able to receive the seed of God's word and produce fruit. What type of things harden our hearts? Maybe a spouse, a parent, or someone close to us has let us down one too many times and our hearts are hardened. Our hearts have been walked over again and again like a pathway that the wayside represents in Jesus' parable. Now you can't trust anybody, including the sower that God sends to give you God's word. And the seed just rests on top of you until something comes and snatches it away. What type of things might cause our hearts to be stony? What pain and sorrows have we repressed are consciously tried to bury, but no matter what we do, they keep rising to the surface, preventing God's word from taking root in our hearts. What cares of the world are thorns choking out God's word? Are we consumed by what's going on in the White House? Are we missing the point of God's word because we let yet another tweet distract us? Do we think that if only we were rich, we could buy our way out of our troubles? What is the condition of our hearts today? There is hope in Jesus' parable. The conditions of the soil, the condition of the soil does not have to be permanent. Soil can be tilled to remove the impurities that block crops from growing. The land can be irrigated to cure dried out hardened soil. In Jesus' parable, the condition of the soil where the sower sows gets progressively better until it is fertile and produces an abundant crop. And I have to tell you, I did a little bit of research into the land in Galilee and how ecology impacts what grows, and it's really kind of fascinating. I found a, an article by a professor who happens to be a believer, a, a, a ecology professor who happens to be a believer. And what they said was that no seed is wasted. So I struggled with this passage a little bit because I love to quote Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, that God's word won't return to God void. So I said, how is it that Satan can come and take away the word? And so what this ecologist says is that when the seed falls on the hard ground and the birds come and eat it, the birds go and poop somewhere. <laughs> and the seed gets planted. And then when the seed falls on the stony ground and the, and it plants, and the plant comes up and it scorches and the plant dies, well, that, the, the dead plant helps to start softening the soil. And then... The, the thorn bush provides shade, and when it, when it dies and helps to start softening the, the, the soil, it starts producing over hundreds of years, over some time, like a, a hummus-like putty. And then the thorn bush provides shade for that putty, and then eventually what happens between that putty and the shade that the thorn bush provides is that the soil gets fertile. And so nothing is wasted in this process, and God's word still does not 
return to God void. And so when we see people with hardened hearts or stony hearts or thorny hearts, we should let their testimony minister to us so that we can have fertile hearts. We should be working to get progressively better until our hearts are healed and whole. And when we reach the point of wholeness, we have to do the maintenance and self-care work to keep our hearts penetrable and ready for the seed of God's word to germinate and produce fruit. We have to read and study God's word while guarding our hearts from the people and things that would harden us or to cause us to become stony or thorny. Becoming healthy takes work, and staying healthy takes work, too. And I recently heard of JOMO. Anybody heard of this? J-O-M-O, -O, the joy of missing out. We always talk about the fear of missing out, where there's this new, this new term, JOMO, the joy of missing out. And basically, in these times that we live in, sometimes don't get on social media. Turn off your TV. Don't look at the news. When some people call, don't answer, because those things... Because those things can produce stone and, and, and thorns that are going to choke out God's word. And, and then you come and you have no faith left because you can't believe how chaotic the, wor the world is and you just don't even see the possibility of God working. So let's practice the joy of missing out. Like the actor in the Verizon commercial, life may take us underground. It might take us into elevators. It might take us on mountaintops or in valleys in remote and rural locations where it seems hard for us to receive a signal. But no matter where we are and what we're going through, we need hearts that can receive God's word. Faith without works is dead. Let us not be afraid to do the work that removes the blockage and makes our hearts penetrable and receptive to God's word. We start a new week today, and for some of us, a new school year begins this week. Let us spend the week in prayer, devotional time, and doing the work to prepare the, our hearts to receive God's word and produce good fruit. So that next week, when God's word goes forth and Jesus asks, can you hear me now, we can respond affirmatively and hear Jesus say, good. Amen. Amen. If this message has touched you in any way and you'd like to come forth for prayer, now is a good time. If, if you find that your heart is not feeling whole, if you find that there are things laying beneath the surface that you just aren't able to let go of, if there are stones in the way, if the cares of the world are choking out God's word, or even if you just like prayer for any other reason, Feel free to come forward at this time.